Hey tech fans, what's going on? Welcome back once again to another edition of Tech of Tomorrow. You guys can see that I have Mr. Asus JJ here with me and what is he doing here? Well, you guys, unless you've been like on another planet, all know that Haswell is getting ready to be released. And today we're gonna to tell you the differences between the Z87 and Z77 platforms. So I'm gonna hand the microphone over to JJ and he's gonna rock and roll all this information for you folks. So. What's going on, man? What's up, man? It's good to see you. It's been a little bit since I last saw you. Been a little by. bit. Thought you like disappeared on us or something. No, man, definitely not. Uh, so, like you said, you know, it's a really exciting time, uh, you know, within the component industry. We've got a brand new chipset, brand new CPU coming along with that chipset. And I know that uh, we always get a lot of questions when chipset and CPU launches. Is like, how is this different from the last generation, right? What differentiates it? Yeah, you know, what, what kind of improvements are we going to see? What kind of changes are we going to see? You know, should I buy this other chipset that might be on the market? You know, and things like that. So, like you noted, we already right now have on the market Z77, and we also have X79 for the ultra high end space, right? So, Z87 is just a replacement for the Z77 chipset. Um, we're going to have two SKUs pretty much just like the previous generation where we're going to have a 4770K and a 4670K. So K denotes it's an overclocking part, so that means it's an enthusiast-oriented part, um, and that pretty much replaces your previous 3770K. And, and actually, we're going to see a lot of differences actually in overclocking with this as well, correct? Which we'll get into some other videos, but there are some big differences in overclocking. A few people out there who like to overclock, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's going to be factors to evaluate. I think total frequency is actually going to be pretty similar, um, but there are going to definitely be considerations as far as how you work with the platform that are going to be different than a previous generation. So, you know, for a lot of the basic things, when we take a look at the, the motherboard side, there's not going to be a lot of things that jump out at you that are, uh, that are going to be different. Um, you know, if we take a look at, let's say, connectivity first up, most people, you know, remember that there was six ports that were natively provided by Z77. And then if a motherboard vendor decided to put any more on, like this board where we have 10 ports, that was done through additional controllers. No change here. Z87 is still going to be six ports, uh, but Intel has done something great, and they've updated all the PCH ports to be SATA 6G capable. So that means inherently, compared to the previous generation where you only had two, you're now getting six. Now, will your board still incorporate the As Media chipset as well to include additional ports? Yes. So of course, you know, we always have enthusiasts. We have people that love storage, want to be able to do more. So we're going to be able to continue to support having boards that have as much much as 10 ports on them so you have more than enough connectivity for everything you need to do. And when you like storage in your motherboard, does it make you a hoarder? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose in some way for people out there, they love to store their photos, their pictures, their games, or whatever it might be. So for us, we just got to make it happen for them. Um, in terms of USB 3 connectivity, there's been a little bit of a change as well. Previous generation, you had four ports. Of course, uh, you know, for our more feature rich boards, we had even more ports than that through adding through secondary controllers or things along those lines. This generation, Intel officially gives you six ports that are based on the chipset. So you get an improvement both in SATA and in USB. Now, does that mean, Jay, that you'll have a choice between running dual and triple channel memory? Does it translate like that or just the availability of ports? Uh, just, just in terms of ports. Uh, but that's a great point. If we go over to the memory side of things, we're still talking about a dual channel platform uh, as opposed to, let's say, quad channel, which is going to be on X79. So uh, X79 is still going to give you significantly more flexibility at putting in more memory and having a higher total bandwidth. And uh, let's just make clear to the audience, this is not geared to replace X79 at all. Correct, right? correct. I mean, in terms, you know, if we just lay that out right now, at the end of the day, X79 is going to have more PCIe lanes. It's going to have more memory bandwidth, more memory density. The CPUs themselves are going to have more cache and more cores. So if you're still looking for kind of the outright highest end platform with the most connectivity and most expansion, it's generally going to be the X79 platform. Um, Z87 and Haswell are the fourth generation core series processors. It's still going to be awesome and they're going to serve probably most of you guys um, great in terms of what you're looking to do. Um, but you know, X79 still definitely has its place in the market and it's not going anywhere. Right. On. Um, so you're still dealing with a dual channel enabled board. The official memory support has gone to be higher than what it was previously. A lot of our boards in the previous generation were qualified up to 2800. Uh, for this generation, we have qualification up to 2933. Now, is that going to be through an XMP setting? Um, you know, like always, there is official memory support that's sanctioned by the CPU, which is up to 1600. And anything greater than that will tend potentially be varied by the CPU quality. Um, so most of the CPUs actually we found over 75% can hold up to 2800 memory speeds, even in four DIMM configurations. But there are gonna be other considerations to keep in mind and we'll talk about the overclocking. All right. um, but 
you know, definitely memory uh, is, is going to continue to be, you know, pretty straightforward. No changes here. DDR3, just like it was before. You're going to be able to take your previous generation kits if you want them and roll them over to here. So pretty much everything that you have right now, if you had a Sandy board or Ivory Bridge setup, you could take everything but your CPU and transfer onto your board. That's a great point though to make though, is that physically the socket is going to be pretty much the, the same in terms of the dimensions and requirement for any guys that are using current uh, generation uh, CPU heat sinks. Like water coolers and all that type of stuff. Everything's going to translate doesn't matter. right yeah, over. You could, you could have a closed loop water cooling solution. You could have a full water blocker. You could just have a regular, you know, uh, fan, uh, fan and heat sink combination and it will work. So you don't have to worry about that the, there's any change or requirement for you to go out and buy a new heatsink, your old heatsink will work entirely okay. Um, you know, there'll be some differences in terms of thermals, but you know, we'll talk about Yeah, but that's that well. actually pretty good for an upgrade path. A lot of times you an upgrade path, you got to go out and buy all new everything. With this, you just kind of buy your board and your CPU, all the rest of your parts will transfer over and continue to work. It will save you money as an upgrade path. Agreed. Um, the last point will probably be that the CPU itself is a little bit different in terms of the previous generation. Um, Intel has gone ahead and actually integrated what's called the IVR. So the IVR is pretty much the power uh, regulation or the power management technology that used to sit externally outside the motherboard and has now been fully integrated inside the CPU. Now, now let's stop there for a second. Mm -hmm. Since you're saying that, how does that actually affect the CPU? Since all that technology is being taken from the board and the CPU, isn't that going to cause some additional heat inside of the CPU as well? There are some changes in terms of how the CPU responds and you know I think for the most part at stock performance it's not going to be really a big change. Uh, there is a little bit difference in the TDP. The previous generation was 77 watts. This generation is 84 watts but it's pretty close. Um, I think where more consideration comes into play is how you work in terms of overclocking the platform and you know we'll talk about in the overclocking video. Um, but you know us as a motherboard vendor that still doesn't change the requirements to have uh, good quality power design and power implementation. So all the things like you know your, your, your inductor or your chokes, you know, your capacitors, your MOSFETs, your drivers, that's still the power delivery components. Um, those don't go anywhere. They'll still have to be on the motherboard. It's just the controller chip. So for years, if you guys have watched the videos that we've done, we've always talked about ASUS leading with digital power uh, design. They've pretty much taken that digital power design and incorporated inside the CPU. So guys- So that have, all those features that you guys have had on your boards before, all that stuff is now actually incorporated inside? A, a lot of, of it, action? you know, there's a little bit of an Intel twist on some of it, but a large degree of the amount of flexibility and tuning that we've offered uh, because of a digital design is now inherently consistent on any one of the boards that will support this. Can I ask you a question, JJ? How mm -hmm. does that actually translate though to the end user? Yeah. Like, so a guy out there who doesn't know much about computers at all, like how does that translate over to them by moving all that technology onto the GPU and not being on the board? I mean, how does that actually work for the end user? Will the end user notice anything at all really different or is it just a technology change? I, I think it's gonna be pretty transparent, especially if you've been using our boards, it's not gonna feel inherently different um, because you're gonna see so much of the same type of options. All in the BIOS, um, you mean? Yeah, right? you know, I mean, uh, hopefully you guys are gonna be taking a look at our product, but you know, if you're looking at competitors, you know, it's probably more advantageous to a lot of the competitors, to be honest, because they're going to get a better uh, quality experience in terms of the consistency of power regulation, power management options, as opposed to maybe the older designs that they were using in the past. Right. So okay. if anything, there's more consistency there. But in terms of the board design as a whole for this platform, um, there are still things that us as a motherboard vendor have to do. And we'll talk about that when we cover more of our board design. Did you guys kidnap Midas? <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get into the board design because definitely we've got an entire You guys can see everything. all the blue is gone and the gold is in. So I'm thinking that these guys kidnapped Midas and had him put the Midas touch on all their boards. But uh, for the most part, I think that gives you a pretty good update. You know, uh, otherwise pretty straightforward in terms that the chipset is an improvement in every single way to the previous generation platform. There's nothing that got reduced down in terms of functionality. Yeah. Uh, the only maybe other thing that sometimes you guys might be wondering about is the graphics performance. For the most part, the most advanced form of the graphics architecture that the fourth generation core series processors bring to the table is only going to be specific to the mobile space okay. uh, or, you know, tablets or small form factor type solutions. Uh, for this generation, you're going to have an improvement, but it's going to be pretty close to what Ivy Bridge graphics performance was, although we get the ability to now drive three digital displays plus higher resolution support for even upcoming 4K technology. Um, so. I think that wraps up most of what we have that's new to Z87 and the, the new uh, Haswell or fourth generation yeah. series processors. Yeah, so stay tuned folks because we're actually going to have lots of more videos with JJ as we actually go over individually a lot of these products, talk about some of the overclocking and actually some really cool systems. So I'm Elric, thank JJ from Azus for coming to be our guest today and we've got lots more stuff coming for you guys here on Tech of Tomorrow.